Hi guys, Elle here. Oh my God, look what came in the mail today. <laughs> Tarot Apocalypsis. Oh, Eric C. Dunn and Kim Huggins. Okay, first off, yo, I totally forgot that I pre-ordered this deck. <laughs> So it arrived in the mail today. Today is August 30th, by the way. Um, and when it came, I sort of hopped online on, on Amazon, where, where I ordered it from, to uh, just to double check and see when it was supposed to come out. I'm like, is it early? Is it late? And yeah, it's actually really late. It arrived to me. I pre-ordered this quite a while ago. Um, and it was supposed to be released on August 8th. And um, from what I was able to gather on Amazon.com, it was released August 8th, and I'm sure lots of people got their decks um, August 8th or August 9th or whatever, um, but they ran out of stock really quickly. This deck is like insanely popular, I guess, because um, even their pre-orders couldn't be filled on the on the day that it was actually released. Um, so this is what, like almost three weeks after its release date um, that I received my pre-order deck. Um, but whatever, I kind of forgot it was coming, so I can't be that mad. <laughs> Um, all I did so far, guys, this is literally an unboxing, um, was I took off the outside plastic. I literally have not even opened this up yet. Um, so first of all, um, the packaging, I thought it was going to be exactly the same, I assumed, as uh, Terra Illuminati. Um, but it's really quite different. Um, and the book is much, much bigger. Um, it's laid out sort of like how they do box sets of books with that outside thing. And then on the inside, you have the book you pull out. Here, I'll pull it out in a second. Let me show you the back first. Um, what does it say here? Immerse yourself in the secrets of the tarot through the mystery, re mystery religions, ancient cultures, and mystical practices of the world. Open Pandora's jeweled box and discover new innovative tarot images. The 464-page hardcover book guides you into the mysteries of the tarot apocalypsis. The sister deck to the best-selling and award-winning tarot Illuminati excuse me, by Eric C. Dunn and Kim Huggins. And there are the few images. Um, I gotta say, really the only reason I pre-ordered this deck was because there's supposed to be, like, I think it's the whole suit of swords and some of the major arcana cards um, are Norse, Nordic themed, so I'm very excited um, to see me some Norse deities and Norse ideas expressed in some tarot cards. I think that'll be really cool. Um, I am a fan of the original tarot Illuminati. There's that guy. See how much different the size is and how it's laid out? This one had like a magnetic thing and then you have the book in here and the deck came in a little box like that. I guess we'll see how the deck comes in a second. Um, and this was a nice packaging. This is even nicer. It's gonna look great in the bookshelf. I never like to put this on my bookshelf because the sides look like, um, you know, selling points sort of, so I didn't love that. But this, it's so simple. Look at that terror apocalypse. I mean, as simple as you could call this um, very elaborate scroll work and gold and all this ornate, um, <laughs> Just the ornateness of both of these decks is insane. Um, but like I said, I did like the Tarot Illuminati. Um, it, the style of artwork and the, the computer manipulation and all the photoshopping, I guess, if, if you can call it that, is um, just not my favorite style of artwork. Um, but I did like it, and I do use it, especially with clients, because... Well, especially with Terra Illuminati, the, um, the images are so recognizable. It's so, so, so Rider Waite Smith based, um, but just gives a different perspective. And I like the use for the most part of other cultures. Um, I think that sometimes, yeah, it does go to a bit of a stereotypical place. And I don't know. We'll see if uh, if this deck um, does the same thing with the cultures that it explores and the suits. But I know that the artwork is in a, in a similar style. And, um, yeah, while it's not my favorite style of artwork, um, I think it'll be interesting. Also, one of the things I noticed, I didn't look at every single card online before I got the deck, but from what I noticed from uh, the imagery that I looked at, it is still Rider Waite Smith based, but they seem to have sort of branched out and, um, yeah, it won't be, it didn't look like it was quite as recognizable to jump out at you as being like explicitly Rider Waite Smith and the, and the imageries, imageries, and the images that they created for each card. So, okay, let's take this stuff out. Here we have, that's the really hard, sturdy box it comes with. Um, and then we have, oh, there's our cards. Ah, they're still shrink wrapped. Is that supposed to be the fool? 
Oh, wait, I think this comes with an extra card. Pandora. I bet that's Pandora's box, like I just said on the back of the box. Hang on, I'll open that in a second. Um, here is the book. It's freaking huge. Let me show you. This is the book that came with um, Terra Illuminati. It's a soft cover, and it's teensy tiny. Um, they did release um, another book by Kim Huggins. Oh, I forget the actual title of it. Whatever. Um, expanding upon the Terra Illuminati, and it sort of looks like this book may be like, uh, in comparison to this one, like both the, those books, the one that comes with the deck and the, and the extra book that you could buy separately. Um, look like they're sort of being combined into this one book. I don't know. I could be full of shit, though. I have no idea. Oh, look at that. I even love it. It has one of those, like, whoop, doopy doos. Oh, what a shame. Good old-fashioned Kabbalistic associations where LF is the fool. Goddamn the Golden Dawn associations. They don't make sense to me. Oh, look at this. Full page illustrations of the cards. Are the minor arcana full page too? Oh, yeah, they are. Look. Everything is full page. Oh my god. Yo, do I see like a Viking? <laughs> look at that. Oh, she's beautiful. Is she like a Valkyrie or like something? She's cool. Oh my god. Oh, that's supposed to be Saga, the goddess of knowledge. Saga! I look at her as sort of an aspect of Frigg. Oh, that's so cool. There's a lot written here, too. What is she supposed to be, the Princess of Swords? Yeah, Princess of Swords. And it gives the mystery and talks about the goddesses. Oh, old Norse stuff. You guys are open to the perfect page. Companion of Odin in her hall, Sokvabek. Yes, yes, yes! Oh, that's cool. Look, Odin Mimir, my favorite stuff. Um, Revelation, I think this is sort of laid out the same way that um, the big Tarot Terri Illuminati book is. The Revelation, um, which talks about the meaning of the card, and then she has it negatively aspected up here. Kim Huggins is one of the greatest tarot authors. Um, I think her stuff is a great place to start, and I really think, um, of course, Mary Kay Greer is like a great place to start, too. Um, but they both just write so easy to understand. I love that. Okay, anyway, that's the basics of the book, I guess. I'm not going to go too into it, because I really want to see my cards. Oh, hey, look at that. They don't have the gold edging. Oh, bummer. I thought they were going to have that gold gilded edge. I wonder why they don't. That's all right. I'll have to edge them myself. I have this um, gold leafing pen, actually, that I've been dying to try out on something, so we'll do it on here. Got it. Oh, that really is kind of disappointing. I thought they were good. I love the edging and the Terra Illuminati. Look at that ugly white edging, which you find on most tarot decks, right? But it's really disappointing when you've seen the deck or a similar deck with something better. Okay, here is an extra card. Los Carabeo shit. Terosophy. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Back to the cards. Actually, I don't like them as much as the Illuminati backs, which I don't personally love, love, love either. They're just incredibly ornate. But I don't hate it. Okay, here's our cards. And by the way, going to do a full walkthrough um, here. Hopefully we'll do a full in-depth review later at some point after I've had a chance to work with the cards. Um, so if you want to be surprised, you know, skip ahead, jump around to what you want to see, and then shut it off. Um, I, I sort of, with decks that I know I'm going to get, don't go through and try to see all the cards. I take a look, make sure I like it. If it's something I know I'm into, like I'm in. The only time I really want to see all of the cards is on decks that I'm unsure about. Um, then I like to see everything and, and really just make sure there's nothing in there that I, I won't be able to work with. Anyway, that said, here is um, what I think is your extra card. Yeah, definitely, because there's your fool. Oh, look, he's like a Sufi whirling dervish dancing fool. Oh, that's cool. There is something different about the style, I feel like, on that card. This one feels very terrible, Illuminati. Fool. That's a cool fool. All right, what the hell is this supposed to be? I have no idea. 
Let me get my lighting better. All right, this is the magician. They are numbered, and it looks like the same font in the Tarot Illuminati. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to do a side by side Tarot Illuminati in this one. It's happening. It's happening. I should probably review Tarot Illuminati too, huh? Wait, I'm gonna leave him out. I wanna look him up and see what that one is. Um, the High Priestess. I bet she's like Persephone or something with her pomegranate. Hang on, I gotta go into the book. This is gonna drive me crazy. Oh yeah, she was Pandora, the all gifted, like your your extra card here. Um, extra cards, I don't usually tend to leave in, but if I do leave it in, it's sort of like uh, the other side of the fool, the completed fool. Um, yeah, Sufi. Whirling Dervish. Ah, I got that one right. I have to read through all this. This is so fascinating. Oh, Jewish Merkaba mysticism. Oh, I love the idea of Merkabas and chariots and um, the modern, you know, Merkaba being, oh, it even sort of looks like that, these um, inter-rotating, counter-rotating fields of light, basically. Um, the Jewish Merkava, I think it's pronounced. Let's see if they talk about it in here. Yeah, in the Torah, Masik Merkava. The completion of the practice is marked by the prince. I'm not going to read the whole thing right now. In the book of Enoch. Yep, Metatron commanded. Oh my god, I like that stuff. That is cool. Okay, let's move on. That was the magician. Oh, I want to see what the high priestess was. We already got to. <laughs> Persephone and the, the Eleusinian mysteries of ancient Greece. Amen. I love that they did this, too. This was in the expanded Tarot Illuminati book. I'm sorry, I don't remember the title right now. I should stop and look it up, but um, whatever. The big Tarot Illuminati book. Um, but they did the same thing. She had this beautiful, like, poem, a, almost as if it was from the point of view of the card or the person in the card. Um, they were beautifully written. Um, and then the mystery talked about the card and the image on the card. Demeter's search for Persephone, the initiation into the mystery of reenactment of Demeter's search for Persephone. This stuff looks really in-depth and not just a quick overview that's sort of meaningless and not very in-depth. This looks nice and in-depth. It is rather a small sort of card meaning, divinatory meaning right here. It's just that little paragraph and then the reversal or negatively aspect, as they call it. Negatively aspected, as they call it. And that's something interesting there, talking too much, ignoring signs, not trusting one's intuition. Yeah, that works. I like that. Oops, I peeked at the next one. Let's say the Empress is the Sumerian cult of Inanna. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at her. Oh my god, look, there's a macaw. There's a parrot. That's one of the other things I didn't love about the other deck, and I'm not loving. I love them, they're beautiful, but I don't necessarily like how. Oh. He looks Celtic, a little bit Nordic. He looks like Thor a little bit. Um, except that. He's Celtic, the blue, and the, this. I wonder who that is. We'll look him up in a second. But one of the things I don't love is, like, look at how incredibly perfect and sexual her body is. Um, and the same with all the men in the decks. Like, their bodies are, like, ooh, sexuality, which I could sort of do without. Like, they're a bit much, I think. Um, let's look up our emperor real quick. Empress. This is neat how the major arcana just jumps all over the place. There he is. The, Romani, the Romano Celtic cult of Tyrannus. Oh, interesting. Like Gaulish, right? Yeah, Gaul and Jupiter Tyrannus. Oh, look, there it is. There's also a suggestion that Tyrannus has the same personality as the Anglo Saxon Thunor, Norse Thor, another god of thunder and war, who was also known for hallowing oaths and protecting humans. Nice, guys. Nice. We're in sync. Me and this deck are in sync. Come on. All right, up next. Oh my God, look at that. A Tibetan Buddhist hierophant. 
That is gorgeous. So that's supposed to be the Dalai Lama? This can take forever if I keep looking in the book, huh? Sorry, Tibetan Buddhism and the Dalai Lama. Holy shit. That is beautiful. That's cool. I love the borderless cards. So bright. These colors are just phenomenal. All right, who are the lovers supposed to be? Oh, I really like this card, guys. Look at that. The moon and the sun. The marriage of the two. Union of opposites. The recognition of opposites. I have to look them up. I'm sorry. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, look. Heros Gamos. The sacred marriage. Now, chemical interpretation of the of the lovers. Well, the goal of the alchemist. See temperance for further discussion. I'm like reading this deck's mind right now. That is so good. Mythology might also recognize the sacred marriage of opposites and the god of war, Aries, Mars, and the goddess of love, Aphrodite and Venus. We're lovers. Oh, that's so sorry. I'll stop reading while I'm making a video. All right, let's move on. The Chariot is the Roman Triumph, Imperial Cult, and Apotheosis of Heroes. Dude, look at that. <laughs> this is sort of reminiscent of that story you often hear when you read about the Chariot, right? How in um, Roman times when they were... This is so Roman, that's so cool too. Um, someone would sit behind the, the victor, um, marching through the town and just whisper into his ear, you are mortal, something like that. You are mortal, you are mortal. You know, bring him back down to earth. You're not there yet. <laughs> That's cool. Um, strength. Oh, look, she's a tiger and not a lion. It's supposed to be Kali? No, that's not Kali. Durga, some form of Shakti, let's see. There she is. Durga Puja, yes. She is gorgeous. What a great way to do strength. Oh, and an Inuit hermit. I think that's Inuit. Oh, yeah, that's Inuit. Beating her drum. Oh, I love the idea of a drum beating hermit. That's good. I bet you anything that's like Persephone or Demeter. Very, very Greek looking. All right, I'll check. The Cult of Demeter. Yes, yes, yes. It's a really pretty deck, you guys. Isn't it pretty? See how sexual she is, though? Like the bottom of her titties are hanging out? I don't know. I don't love that. Um, Egyptian Justice. Very good. That is, of course... Um, What's her name? Who who weighs the heart against a feather? It's all right there. I can't think of her name right now. Let's check. Maat, der. There she is, Maat. All right, I'm gonna stop looking stuff up. I'm sorry. This is gonna take forever to go through. Um, the hanged man, Native American looking. Death. This one's very busy. I have to really look at this one here. Not sure if that's from someplace specific. Oh, Temperance is definitely an alchemist. It looks so creepy. Can you guys see that dude's face? Very Celtic looking almost. Oh, look at that burning tower. That Indian ascetic. All the stars, the Virgin Mother Mary. That's beautiful. That's a good way to go with the star. Oh, I love that. And the moon. Mm -hmm. Nope, I have Artemis? With her dogs? I'm not sure, wait, oh my god, I know I said I was gonna stop looking stuff up, but I'm not sure that I won't do it for all the miners, I swear. What's that? Oh, Mexican, Santa Muerte was deaf. Um, temperance, just alchemy, yep. <laughs> um, the devil is the imagined cult of the witch's sabbat. I don't know, I'm gonna have to read that. That's weird. Um, the tower was something <laughs> of ascetics of India. I'm literally getting this like verbatim, that's so funny. Um, Virgin Mary. 
star. Oh, here we go. The moon. Oh, Hecate. It's supposed to be Hecate. The cult of Hecate. I like it. Very cool. Stop. And then the sun could be Apollo. He's looking very Greco-Roman. Oh, the Roman cult of Mithras. Mithras. Judgment. Oh, I skipped ahead. Judgment is the great flood. That's actually a really beautiful card. And the world card. Oh, that is beautiful. Look at that. You see the, the soul of the earth. Sophia, maybe? I'm looking it up. And the, the hero down here looking very Roman with his butt cheek showing. I really could have done without... Not that body parts are sexual in and of themselves, but... Like, just the way they're standing, they're just sort of using sexuality. Alright, what's the world? Stop it. The Sophia of Valentinian Gnosticism. God, I love... I really love how they've just put mixed all these different ancient traditions and um, mystery schools into into the into the cards especially the major arcana huh that is really cool okay on into our minors um, and if it's anything like tarot illuminati each and every suit is going to be of a different mythology or a different culture and this looks to be very egyptian with our ace of wands oh yeah uber egyptian i swear i'm not gonna look these up i'm not i just really want to get to the swords where i think the north stuff is so i'm gonna go really quick here <laughs> Very Egyptian. Ooh, it's a hippo. Oh, hippos freak out my wife. She's not gonna like that card. <laughs> some of them look to be like pharaohs and images of like Egyptian society, and some of them look like gods. That's cool. I'll look it up after and see if some of them are supposed to be like specific gods. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. The builders of the of the pyramids, maybe. The princess of wands. Oh, I love me some onks and wings. The way everything is sort of superimposed over other images. Really beautiful too. Look at that. He's really cool looking. Um, it is sort of like what I saw in some of the images that I did see, though. Like they are not. They don't scream Rider Waite Smith. Like, he's not throned. Is that supposed to be Horus? Um, oh, you guys, we're at the swords. Oh, <laughs> a little squirrel. Ah, and there's fucking runes. Oh my god, can you guys even see that? <gasps> and Hoogan and Moonen. This first sword is like the world tree. Feyu and Manas and Kenas and Othala, Kebu, Thursas, Berkana, Isa, Hagalas, <laughs> Yira, Oh, Dagas, Ogis. There's so many runes. The moon and the sun. Oh, look, it literally, I didn't even see that behind there. It actually is the tree. Oh, look at that. Those are antlers. Oh, my God. There's a little, um, a noose that Odin hangs from, I guess. <laughs> it actually is a tree, though, behind there, and the sword's just on top of it. Um, oh, the antlers of the of the deer that that chew on the roots of the world tree. <gasps> We're at my favorite suit. <laughs> Look, he's playing Tafel. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be like that. I haven't seen any of these images actually so far, but um, <laughs> we're only at the two. But um, there is this very stereotypical barbarian thing sort of happening with these Viking warriors that I, I don't love. But, uh, oh, that's so cool to see anything Norse represented. Like, oh, I love. So far, I don't feel like I'm being, I know I've talked about this before, where Norse decks, um, 
almost, I, I have a hard time with them because I'm so into the mythology and, um, and what it means to me on such a personal level that seeing the myths and cards that might not necessarily have a lot to do with it would, would take me out of it and, and be a little weird to, to work with. Um, I'm finding that with the, the deck that I am working with now. Um, shoot, what's it called? Uh, sorry, the, the Viking Tarot, I think it's called. Anyway, he's playing Toffel, or what's the full name for it? Naf, Naf, Nafel, Nafen Taffel, something like that. It's basically like um, a a Viking chess game. Oh, that's cool because even runes inscribed on the side here. Three of Swords. Not uber Nordic feeling, but I do feel like I'm in the North. It's good for Three of Swords though. Um, Four of Swords. Oh, look back there. That's Freya. That's an old, old image of Freya. I feel like that's probably not Freya with a dog and, and how she is. She may just be a, a, a Viking Norse person. Oh, it's a stereotypical classic. Um, they look at the right out of the TV show Vikings, right? <laughs> Happy in the meadow. Fighting in the middle from five of swords. I don't know. Whatever. That's interesting. What the fuck is she supposed to be? Oh, I like the Norse longboats. And that's good for the six of swords. That's cool. There's references to classic Rider Waite Smith, but it looks different. This is cool. Okay, I'm sorry, you guys. I have to look up that. Okay, I found her. This card image shows a community of Viking settlers readying their ships for a journey to their new life. As the ships sail off from one shore to another, the spirit of a pregnant woman watches over them. This is the Filgyukona, or Filgya, a female spirit that followed a person and would pass on to another family member upon the death of her owner, carrying their luck to the next generation. In this way, luck and fortune were seen as transitional. The word Filgya was also often used synonymously with hamingya, an expression of a man's thought or mind as well as fortune and luck. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so for me personally, filgya is sort of synonymous with fetch. So it would be more like a, an animal spirit or an animalistic spirit um, that followed a person and of course could be, you know, sort of followed an entire bloodline or the entire family it's connected with. Um, and I don't necessarily view it as synonymous with a hamingya. Hamingya is more your, for me personally, your higher self, your guardian angel, um, all that kind of stuff. But not that any of this is wrong by any means, just different ways of looking at the same thing. And it's very interesting the way that they've depicted her, this icy, scotty looking woman, very blue and pregnant. That is so interesting. It really does work that she's pregnant with the six of swords though. This is so cool. Seven of Swords. Look at that <laughs> bulky Viking. <laughs> you get sort of this um, thief thing going on here. What the hey now, ho now? <gasps> that is beautiful. Look at that Hoogan and Moon in up there. I'm not sure what that four is supposed to represent. And we got some runes. Esau Perthro. Is that supposed to be Sawilo? Or Hagalaz, maybe. A weird looking Hagalaz. Oh, wait, we gotta look this one up too, guys. Sorry. Um, is this supposed to be Odin hanging, maybe? Oh, look, the runes are suspended from the web of weird. The Hugin of Moonin. Oh, that's a skull up there. Oh, as the Eight of Swords. I get it. I see it. Hang on. Check it out. Double fours. Which is maybe why we have the four up top. Um, it says, here we see a man almost naked bound to a neath stang, also called a neathing pole. Oh, that's cool. Although he's not blindfolded, Odin's ravens tug at the red strings that weave among the swords and create a web. From which hang three runes. Here we go. Um, Esau, Perthro. I'm just supposed to be Hagalaz. That's a weird looking Hagalaz, yo. Whatever. The runes work their magic to keep the man frozen in place, beaten down, his plight hidden from others. It talks about um, the Neathing Pole. 
even tells the sagas where these things come from. This is so good. Oh, the Gondra book. Oh, the Web of Weird, like I said, talks a little bit about Orlog. Eight. Here is our nine. What the hell? Oh, shit. Is that supposed to be Hela or Hail? That's cool. I'm going to go with that for now. And the Ten of Swords. Oh, oh, wait. I know what this is. This is a fallen man on the battlefield, stabbed by swords like the Ten of Swords, and he is being picked up by his Valkyrie. Look at her. That is cool. Look, he's even ripping the, the dead man's soul out to carry it to Valhalla, or wherever he's going. All right, on into our court cards. Oh, that's the picture I saw before. <laughs> is that supposed to be Loki? Chained? Oh, I'm looking it up. Hang on. Ten of Swords. Oh, sorry. The, um... There's even a place for notes in the book. Oh, that's cool. Oop, and a bit about the authors back there. Daily draw practices. There's all sorts of stuff at the back of that book there. Um, but the court cards are separated out into the back. There we go. Oh, wow, the king is about to be Odin. <laughs> um, oh, they did do the same thing they did in the other. They have um, princess, prince, queen, and king. Yeah, is Loki, the adversary of the gods and blood brother of Odin. Oh my god, you guys, I cannot wait to talk about um, Loki in the, the Norse paganism series that we just started. But that is cool that he is, like, flying on a friggin' falcon. It's so cool. Loki. And then, is this supposed to be Frigg? Let's see. Queen of Swords. Oh, it's just the Volva, or the Vala, the wise woman who teaches and speaks truth. Amen. Oh, God, here's a big close-up of her. Okay, seriously, I might, like, rip this page out of this book and frame it and put it on my altar, because that is... That's Frigg. I'm sorry. That's Frigg. Look at her. Now they say it's more Freya, Queen of Swords, and Orlog. She's weaving a web. <laughs> Save magic, Velaspa. Oh, they mention everything. This is cool. All right, Queen of Swords. Here's the Volva, the Cirrus, and then <gasps> the mighty Allfather. He's such a Viking-looking dude here, though. It kills me. Um, he's got his two wolves and his two ravens. I could have done without the winged helmet. That looks exactly like it's right out of the movie Thor. <laughs> but whatever. Very armored-looking Odin. Oh, there's runes at the bottom. And his horn. Oh, this is cool. Shields that sleep near and Yggdrasil and the shields behind him. I didn't see a depiction of sleep near. Oh, and then we move on into other stuff. Okay, it's over. <laughs> Ace of Cups. Let's see. This looks very Greek. Very Greek. Those dolphins up there. Give it away. Among other things, Two of Cups. Look at that caduceus in the back that you very classically see depicted on the Two of Cups very often. Nice one, guys. Three of Cups. That one looks very, very right away, Smith. And your Four of Cups. Oh my god, this card is scratched the F up. Did this happen to anybody else with Terror Illuminati? I think I have a scratchy card, too. That is really scratched. Can you see that? See those lines right there? That is not supposed to be there. All oh, these scratches all over it. Come on, guys, get your shit together. How does that even happen? I haven't seen it on any other card so far. Yeah, no, this one's fine. Five of Cups. <laughs> That's actually a cool looking card. They're very busy, but I don't know. They almost seem not as busy as some of the Terra Illuminati cards. Like I said, I really want to do a side by side of uh, this one, the Terra Apocalypsis, and uh, look at these muscle bound dudes. <laughs> Um, and the sexy butt of a lady. Oh, that looks neat. I wonder what that one's supposed to be. 
I'm stopping. I'm not going crazy. Anyway, a side by side of Terror Illuminati and Terror Apocalypsis. Um, there is definitely a lot of differences. Not like, you know, you're gonna feel like, why should I get this deck if I already have that deck? You know, they're very different, but I think it'll be cool to look at them both. Oh, the princess and her butterflies. Oh, the candle. Is that. Oh, I can't think of her name. It's like sort of a goddess of death if her candle goes out. The shit happens. I don't know. Um, the Prince of Cups. Looks like Eros, Cupid. The Queen of Cups, looking very mermaid-like. Aphrodite, perhaps? The King of Cups. Um, Orpheus, maybe, with his, um, harp. What do you call those? I forget. Oh, shit, look at that. Ace of Pentacles. What is this supposed to be? Something very Eastern. Oh, Indian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. Uh, Lingam Stone. I think that's what it's called. Look <laughs> at those ships. Look very Nordic. The dragons on them. Pentacles. Indian stuff. That's beautiful. On the elephant. Five Pentacles. Looks very um, Thai. A lot of this looks very Thai. That looks a little bit more Tibetan. Nepalese, perhaps. Ganesha on the Eight of Pentacles with the monks. Oh, they almost look Chinese there. Oh, she does too. She looks very Eastern. Their cheetah. Nine of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles. Is that another elephant back there? I think so. Look at the running waterfall that they're all in. That's beautiful. These are really interesting looking pentacles. Can you see that? They're like stars. Um, the Princess of Pentacles is a <gasps> pregnant woman. Look at the parrot. I love parrots. <laughs> I want a peacock with the Prince of Pentacles. Very nice. Um, Queen of Pentacles. Look at that goddess with all her arms, holding a baby in her arms. And lotuses, and she's got the, um, what do you call that? The henna all over her hands. She's got the owl flying above her head. I wonder if that's supposed to be a specific goddess. Maybe Lakshmi or something. Oh, a blue god. Vishnu, maybe? Got peacock references and sorts of tools and cobras. Yeah, I bet you that's Vishnu. Look at the way the, the world, the forest behind him just like glows. The fireflies and the bright green. Oh, the leaves are even making beautiful patterns. That is gorgeous. Ah, oh, the end. <laughs> back to uh, back to the beginning. With our extra Pandora card. Um, okay, real quick, let me do a little comparison. I did grab my Tarot Illuminati um, and some and a Rider Waite Smith. Um, let's do a little, let's do a size comparison actually. Here is, isn't that pretty for my Terra Illuminati? <laughs> Very ornate looking pen. Actually, this one comes with an extra card, so I'm going to take that out. It actually, the cards must be, yeah, they are a little thicker. The Terra Illuminati is thicker. Thicker, and like I said, it does not have the beautiful edging that I just assumed was going to come on this on this deck. I bet you they're the same size, though. Oh, they're so, so close. They seem to be the same length. It's hard to see there, wait. But it is, um, the Terra Illuminati is ever so, can you see right over here, like just a hair um, wider. It's just a little bit more narrow, the, the Terra Apocalypsis. Um, but then those few differences, they're very similar. It's 
just a bit thicker the terra lumina which actually was a complaint i had they're pretty thick and actually the um what do you call it the the gold edging does wear off on this deck pretty easily and it did make it a little hard to shuffle it was like the gold's a little bit too thick for the cards and it created a little lip almost on the end which is a little weird so you know really i'm not too upset that this doesn't have that it feels smooth all the way up to the end of the cards um and we'll do a little rider weight smith comparison it's, they're basically um standard tarot size the apocalypse it's apocalypses and <laughs> good god say that three times fast tarot apocalypses and tarot illuminati are basically standard tarot size um they are a hair taller and a hair wider than your standard Rider Waite Smith Centennial Edition. Oh, by the way, ready? This really is completely irrelevant to this video, but I did pull out some things to decorate this deck with. I was thinking of going with a light gold. That doesn't match so good, though. I think I might go with black. And then, oh my god, since there was so many Peacock references, actually, I just made my final decision. I had this thing that I might put on it. It's like three um, interlocking rings. I thought it was nice. I had an eagle earring, actually, I was going to put on the back. Um, just a shiny something. But I actually think I like this the best. It's a... Uh, from a necklace that someone gave me. It's a peacock feather, can you see that? Um, and it came with these few like peacock colored beads that sort of fell over it on the necklace. And I think I'm gonna keep them together, attach them to this black bag with um, a little safety pin, and that'll be the Terra Apocalypses, Apocalypses, <laughs> new home. Yay, new tarot decks. So much fun. All right, guys, I am going to stop there. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for um, a review of Tarot Illuminati and a side-by-side -side of the Tarot Apocalypsis and the Tarot Illuminati. I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.